work a sweater. Decades they've done the windows this way. You Are you covering yourself up and tucking yourself in? The new bed is performing beautifully, but I, I am not sleeping well. Huh. Gotta do something about the light in here. I've been blinding folding myself like this, but it's still too bright. None of the windows are covered. I have no curtains, and I don't know what to do about it. Are you feeling a little rowdy, Renee? You came scooting up here, running like a maniac. Picking fights. Get out of my desk. Hey. What? What? Ouch. 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 No. Oh, she keeps her distance. She's just being playful. She's not being... It's not being harmful. Ah! I'm getting my car serviced at Mercedes. That's the service bay. She's not in it yet. I'm waiting for my shuttle ride. Just having a look around and see what I can show you. Anyway, she's off. She's off in the waiting area. They're gonna bring her in here and work on her. Summertime, and it's really hot, so we're doing the dishes outside, and everybody's out here enjoying the sunlight. Even Sam Bird. Right, Sam? Not much left. So, what I'll do, once that gets going good, probably just dump the whole bag right on top. Yes. I do not know if this little baby belongs in the trees. She's hanging out on the ground and I'm afraid for her because I cannot supervise my dogs well enough. I'm going to try and go in and rescue her and put her up into the bushes. Do you think I can? She could duck away under some twigs, so I'm not sure. I'll try. Well, there's a little baby bird up against the fence over there in a pile of brush and twigs that's supposed to be in the, in the sky. Its sparrow parents are complaining. I am making smoked chicken today. Got the fire started. Uh, Renee's been just chilling in the yard all day. Yeah, so I, uh, I've also been working on touch-up paint for my car. So let me go take and show you that. I'm really glad that this lesson in, in car touch-up happened in a hidden spot that you can't see with the door closed because it's a mess. Uh, the clear coat they gave me was gloopy, like sticky and gloopy and taffy. So I, I hit it over top with some clear coat nail polish because as far as I know, they're both the same. But as you can see, um, I've missed a bunch of, of sanding marks and uh, 
I've got a bunch of, of unevenness. I think I'll come back in here now and see if I can get a nice smooth. As long as I stay outside this line, that area here is what you see. This is hidden. So I can get away with it and I can learn why it is that we pay somebody who knows what he's doing when we need to fix our car. And uh, if I have any spots that show up where people see it, why I need to pay somebody. <laughs> Having a perfectly lovely afternoon on a warm summer day, just hanging out quietly in the house, not being bugged by puppies. I see you've taken her bed. <laughs> you look so happy. You look so happy, little bud. Yeah. Just a beautiful summer day to relax, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The rare example of a sleeping puppy. You see a lot more of it on the vlog than we do in our life. Steak, it's sweltering hot in here, but I find if I move slow, I'm okay. So I want to put that wire thing. I've had it around for ages. It's scrap that I found somewhere, and then I um, I used it as part of a birdcage once, and now I want to use it as part of a bed. But as you can see, there's not enough space. If I take this stuff, I think if I put one of these at every single one of these loops and just put it on, bend it over and screw it down, cut it off and just go all the way along putting these in, I think that's all I need to do. So I really, I also really want to use the other one here. It's not fastened down or anything, but you can see it's going to protect these windows from impacts and it's going to allow me to hang stuff on it. So this is the side I want to put that on. This has pegboard to do that. And it still allows a little light through so that the window can glow slightly, or not. I don't know. But I want these windows to shine at least.
Should have recorded yesterday. Had my phone out a lot, but it was too much going on. I didn't want to try and deal with being cameraman as well. And uh, in terms of putting other people on YouTube, there's, I can't explain it, but for some reason, just some subconscious reason, I just don't want to put people on YouTube if they're not already vloggers. Generally, they're not comfortable with such things as being presented on a YouTube channel. So rather than ask and listen to what is inevitably a very long rant about the internet full of inaccuracies that I have to bite my tongue not to correct, I just don't ask. So I went to a rave last night, um, sort of. The rave was a three-night event full of people that um, used to party 20 years ago. And so all of us were 40 and above. I mean, 40 was like at the bottom end of the scale unless it was someone's kid. And um, it was really fun to show up. I didn't, I knew that I couldn't do three nights in a row. I didn't have any idea how much I couldn't do this rave until I actually went and did my volunteer shift on the door last night from eight to 10. It was wonderful. I loved it. It was awesome. It was the perfect thing for me. But every time that I went upstairs to the dance room, my lungs closed and I had to basically hold my breath, not like underwater holding my breath, but I was only able to get a tiny amount of airflow anymore. The whole time I was walking across the floor to get my drinking back, so I spent my night sitting, standing out front of the place. I got two free drink tickets. I got to enjoy the party and all of the people for free. <coughs> and I didn't feel like I had to be upstairs where the music is. And in fact, the music that's playing in the bus right now, somebody recorded all of the music last night and put it on SoundCloud, so. I get to enjoy the music, I got to enjoy the people, I got a few peeks at the light effects, I'm feeling way ahead of the game. We've had an explosion of flies this summer, so we've put up fly tape, and as you can see, it's really catching them. It doesn't seem to be helping. There's so many dogs in this neighborhood, this neighborhood breeds flies really well. Well, and there you have it. It's a bed. This is a piece of scrap I had, and I put this on here because I, f I could sense that this was going to bend until it eventually bent quite a lot. So I thought if I just stick something underneath it, that's going to annoy me because the something is an eighth of an inch too short. <laughs> but once the bedding's on, it'll probably stay down all the time. But that'll keep it from bending. And then I've got these boards. So... I gotta get my foamy in here. I, got, I realized I don't have enough foamy. I, I gotta get the one out of the trailer, I think. But it will support my weight. And it's nice and long, so I won't be getting cramped up. I could stretch. So I don't know if I'm gonna sleep facing this way, or maybe. I'll sleep facing this way. This would be better because this would give me maximum ventilation under the sweat zone. But anyway, you shake it. There's enough room to really stretch it out. I like it. I mean, I could have done it with all lumber, but I had these screens. And that was a whole lot cheaper and faster. Fast and cheap, isn't that the holy grail? Fast and cheap and you can still use it? I mean, that's the other end of the holy grail. The, the ideal is good quality and you can afford it. But when that's not an option, fast and cheap is really attractive. Anyways, it's a little too hard to lay on without a foamy. Ugh. When the foamy's on, I've measured it. I should come up to about the height that I find comfortable to sit on. And it'll also fill in this space. This is this lip keeps the bedding from falling off in the night. Even if I park on a slant. Okay, well there you have it. The finished bed. I want to get a proper foamy. It's made up of bits and pieces, but for now I can sleep on it. And uh, Timmy is demonstrating how well that works. How do you like it so far, Timmy? Pretty comfy? <laughs> and 
underneath. Simple storage. We'll improve on it over time. But I'll show you when I sit on it. This is the best part. It's strong enough. How do you like the new couch? You like it? You like it a lot? Aw, oh, yes, that's a good girl. Sailor Dan's funeral. That's my placemat drawing from him from the early, I don't know, the early 90s when he first started drawing ships for people. We used to hang out at the Second Cup on Second Avenue back in 1983, and he would like hold court all afternoon at the back talking away. He was a very cheerful and friendly guy. Uh, you had to talk to him for quite a while before he started talking about his troubles, and boy, he had them. He couldn't get gainful employment and was mostly homeless because he kept getting mad at people for being mean to other people. He didn't tolerate bullying. But as anyone who has a full-time job knows, if you don't tolerate bullying, you're not going to keep a job. The infamous ship. So poor Sailor Dan was never fully employed. Uh, I was thrilled to see how many people showed up to say goodbye to him, though. He may have died in poverty, but he did not die unknown or unloved. He was much loved. He had a lot of character. Um, it was just beautiful to see all those people show up. So hats off to you, Sailor Dan. You became a sailor in truth. I, I had to put everything in a plastic bag because it was raining. So my camera could have stayed out, but I didn't think of it. So I don't have footage of most of the memorial. Uh, let's see. They were doing the Christian service stuff that the Salvation Army does, involving uh, hymns and prayers and Bible stuff. Dan was not a Christian. But whatever, they were doing their thing. And the heavens opened up and uh, we all scurried under a tent and that was the end of the PA system that was the end of the extra frivolous fluff but those of us that really gave a damn we stuck around to the end of the rainstorm when the rain was finished I said what about the post we've got to have last post Someone says, a request for last post. And someone else says, yes, we've got to have last post. That was more important to Dan than all the rest of that nonsense. Just the post. So they're like, okay, the guy that does the, that was going to read the military eulogy is still here. So we'll have him read that. And we'll see if we can get the trumpet player to come back. The, the, the bugler had left. And uh, so they couldn't find him. So they're about to, they, they finish the word, the, the guy finishes the words, and they're going to do the poppies. And I said, you know, I could, I've got a blue, by then I had dug it out. I've got a Bluetooth speaker. I can dig up the last post on YouTube. Can we do it that way? So we did. Two and a half minutes, um, two and a quarter minutes. And I just held the speaker up and held the phone in the other hand out. And people saluted or looked down or looked around as they felt appropriate. And we paid military last respects to Dan. Sailor Dan. Bon voyage. Yeah. And I really enjoyed being able to tell people my story about Dan. Because I, I had known him longer than most. 
And I, I, I didn't appreciate it that I have known him since 1982. And he was a young man in his 20s. And that was before he even began drawing the ships. And I've got one of the earliest. So that was a kind of a cool story and a cool thing. And I got to meet other people that had known him. And I even met a guy I haven't seen in 20 years. So, and a few other people that I see around and I know. Yeah. So anyways, the rain and hail came pouring down. Drenched the PA system. Someone had the sense to unplug it. But the snacks and coffee survived, and the hearty few stuck around to the end. And we had a long time of just talking about him, too. We're sleeping in the bus. All three of us. Don't make a fuss, just get on the bus. Join us, get on the bus. All three of us. Sleeping on the bus.